The Wives of Philip II and I of Spain and Portugal Philip II is often remembered for his very prudential reign over his vast empire and absolutism, as well as his military leadership. But who were the women in the shadow of his fame? In this video, I will briefly discuss all four of his wives, three of whom were closely related to him. Maria Manuela of Portugal Maria was born on October 15, 1527. Her father, John III of Portugal, had no living sons and she was then heiress presumptive. He had struggled to produce a male heir until 1537, when a living baby boy was finally born, named John Manuel, but he was a sickly boy who suffered from juvenile diabetes. Despite the great possibility she would be Queen of Portugal, Maria received a basic education supervised by her mother, Catherine of Austria. In hopes to put Portugal under Spanish rule, Maria was betrothed to Philip, then the Prince of Asturias, as well as her double first cousin. Both husband and wife had the same grandparents. Maria was escorted to the border by the Bishop of Cartagena and the Duke of Medina. Philip then went undercover, as he was not to see her before their wedding. The two were married on November 12, 1543 at 9 o'clock p.m. The couple's wedding feast lasted until the early hours of the morning. The marriage began on the serenade. At about 3 o'clock in the morning, the two were separated by Philip's guardian. His tutor thought it would be best to not keep them alone as much as possible due to their young ages. Philip, however, told his guardian that he would like to spend more nights with her. Maria began to gain weight as their marriage progressed, but Philip said that it was a part of her beauty. Her own mother was shocked and asked her to watch her weight. Maria went into labour in July of 1545. No experienced midwife was able to be found to assist in the birth. On July 8, Maria gave birth to a son, Carlos, named after his paternal grandfather, Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor. The child was horribly disfigured with uneven shoulders and legs, as well as being hunchbacked. He would grow up developmentally behind and as well as mentally handicapped. Tragically, four days later she died from a hemorrhage caused by the birth. She was only 17 years old. Over the next several years, Philip, now a widow, travelled around Europe to handle his royal duties. After a failed marriage negotiation with a Portuguese princess, his father suggested his second wife, who was Mary I of England. Mary was born on February 18, 1516. Her father was King Henry VIII of England, who had for many years, had struggled to produce a male heir, let alone a living child. The birth of Mary was seen as a disappointment to him. But both her parents, including Queen Catherine of Aragon, loved their only living daughter dearly. Mary received an excellent education and she was sent to Wales to have her own court at Ludlow Castle. In 1533 after many years of failed pregnancies, Henry annulled his marriage to Catherine and she was banished from court to make room for wife number two, Anne Boleyn. Mary was then stripped of her titles and lands, as well as her title of princess, now being known as Lady Mary. She also would never see her mother again. Mary refused to acknowledge Anne as the queen or her new half-sister, Elizabeth, as a princess. On January 7, 1536, her mother Catherine died, likely of illness. Henry refused to let her attend Catherine's funeral but he himself and Anne ended up attending, wearing bright yellow outfits. That same year, Henry was disappointed that Anne had not yet produced a male heir. Instead of to keep trying, Henry had her beheaded on likely falsified charges that same year. The news of this was all but good for Mary. Henry then married wife number three, Jane Seymour, also a Catholic. But soon after the marriage, Mary signed an oath submitting to her father's will and declaring her illegitimate, but also welcoming her back to court. 
The two got along well and both women became good friends. Jane tried to help Mary as much as she could, possibly in hopes of restoring her to the succession, and, as a gift, she gave Mary a diamond ring. In October of 1537, Jane went into labour and gave birth to a healthy baby boy, Prince Edward. She named Mary his godmother. Tragically, Jane died soon after the birth from childbed fever. Mary was devastated after she had died. After two more failed marriages, Henry married for the final time to Catherine Parr, a wealthy heiress and widow. It was Catherine who would convince Henry to finally restore Mary and Elizabeth to the succession. Henry's new succession went as follows. First Edward, then Mary, then Elizabeth. Henry died on January 28, 1547. He was succeeded by Mary's younger half-brother, Edward, now Edward VI. Edward's reign had only lasted six years, when in 1553, he was becoming fatally ill. Edward was horrified of leaving the throne to his older half-sister, Mary. So instead, he changed the succession to ensure a Protestant future of England with his cousin, Lady Jane Grey. He removed his sisters on the ground of illegitimacy. Edward died on July 6, 1553. After just nine days on the throne, Jane was deposed by Mary's forces and arrested in the Tower of London. Now Queen, Mary needed to produce a Catholic heir, as to keep her sister Elizabeth away from the throne. Her former betrothed, Charles V, suggested a marriage between her and his son, Philip. Philip was all set to head to England, until a rebellion broke out in favour of Lady Jane Grey, Elizabeth, and the Protestant cause. Wyatt's rebellion, led by Thomas Wyatt, was intended to depose Mary and replace her with her half-sister, Elizabeth. The rebels were defeated and Mary was not going to let the rebellion off the hook easily. Despite her fear of executing Jane, she signed her death warrant. Jane was executed on February 12, 1554. Around the same time, Philip received a copy of the treaty upon his marriage to Mary. He was dissatisfied with it and shocked how it gave him less power than he had hoped for. Philip was married by proxy in March of 1554. He left Spain on July 13 that same year to head to England. The couple were married on July 25 at Winchester Cathedral. Miscommunication between England and Spain during the marriage negotiations had caused the dispute over things such as household servants and finances. During his tenure as king, he had trouble communicating with his court and needed a human translator. Mary was deeply in love with Philip, while he was not. He thought that his only job was to impregnate Mary and ensure his title as king. When Mary had allegedly become pregnant in November 1554, he remained until the baby would hopefully be born, but it would never happen. Mary likely experienced a phantom pregnancy, a tumor combined with a psychosomatic episode. After this, he left Mary and returned to the continent. She is often nicknamed Bloody Mary for the executions of over 280 Protestants during her reign. Several years later, in the summer of 1558, an epidemic hit England, which caused Mary to fall ill. Philip feared that after her death, France would declare war on England to put her cousin, the Dauphine of France, Mary, Queen of Scots, on the throne. Mary died on November 17, 1558, at age 42. He did everything in his power to make sure that the transition from Mary to Elizabeth would go smoothly without any wars. After Philip's victory at the Battle of St. Quentin, he wanted to make peace with France. He agreed to a treaty which now required him to marry for the third time to the daughter of Henry II of France, who was Elizabeth of France. Elizabeth was born on April 2, 1545. She was the daughter of Henry II of France and his wife Italian noblewoman Catherine de Medici. Elizabeth grew up in the royal nursery and with the request of her father, shared a bedroom with her brother Francis's future wife, 
Mary, Queen of Scots. The two would remain lifelong friends. Her lady-in-waiting reported that Elizabeth was shy, timid, and in awe of her formidable and domineering mother. While she wasn't considered a beauty compared to her sisters and sister-in-law, she was one of her mother's more attractive daughters. In 1550, her father began negotiations to wed Elizabeth to Edward VI of England. However, Pope Julius III threatened to excommunicate her and Edward if they were married. Despite the disapproval from the Pope, he continued to attempt to wed her to him. However this fell through upon Edward's death in 1553. After winning the Battle of St Quentin in 1557, Philip wanted to make peace with France. The Treaty of Cato Cambrésis was intended to make peace between both countries by wedding the 31-year-old Philip to the 14-year-old Elizabeth of France. Two months after the treaty was signed, Elizabeth was married to Philip I by proxy and then in Spain on June 22. At their wedding, she met renowned Renaissance artist Sophonis Anguissola, who would become her personal painter and lady-in-waiting. Less than a month after the wedding, Elizabeth's father died in a jousting accident. Her brother Francis was then proclaimed the King of France. A year later in December of 1560, her older brother Francis died from an ear infection that had caused a deadly infection. Her lifelong friend, Mary, Queen of Scots, was sent away from France and back to her native Scotland. Despite the couple's age difference, Philip grew infatuated with his teenage bride, which he shared too, saying she was fortunate to have married so charming a prince. By 1564, Philip gave up his infidel lifestyle because of his love for her. Elizabeth grew close to her teenage stepson, Carlos, Prince of Asturias, despite his mental disabilities. When she heard that he was to be locked away, she was devastated and cried for days. After several miscarriages and stillbirths, she finally gave birth to a healthy baby girl, Isabella Clara Eugenia, on August 12, 1556. Despite her being a girl, both parents were rejoiced and provided their daughter with a plethora of toys, dolls, and more. A year later, Elizabeth gave birth once again to another daughter, Catherine Michel. The girls were beloved by their parents and given the same dignity as heirs to the throne. Tragically, in July of 1568, Elizabeth's stepson and the heir to the throne died, likely due to his poor health. The prince's death was used to spread anti-Spanish propaganda around the Netherlands by Philip's enemy, William, Prince of Orange. Three months later, Elizabeth had miscarried daughter on October 3rd. She died that same day. Elizabeth was given a grand funeral in the Chapel Royal with tapestries of the houses of Habsburg and Valois hung around the room. Many of Elizabeth's household women cried during the funeral. Later that night, Philip went in the chapel with his half-brother and several friends and kneeled in front of his deceased wife's coffin, prayed, and left. Philip, widowed for the third time, had no living sons, which was a serious threat to the future of the Spanish Empire. To hopefully produce a male heir, Philip married Anna of Austria. Anna was born on November 2, 1549. She was the daughter of Archduke Ferdinand and of Austria and his wife Maria of Austria. Her parents were first cousins. Ferdinand was a doting father who endeared himself to his daughter, allegedly once postponing a governmental meeting to care for her when she was ill. Young Anna was raised in both Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. Although she was raised in the Catholic Church, her father sympathized with Protestants and was a very enlightened ruler. Her parents had hoped to arrange a marriage for Anna to her first cousin, Carlos, the Prince of Asturias and heir to the Spanish Empire. This fell through in 1568 when he died. However, another opportunity for Anna came when her maternal uncle, Philip, was looking to wed again and produce a male heir. Her parents jumped on this opportunity and arranged a betrothal between her and Philip. Despite the disapproval of the marriage between her and Philip by the Pope, the betrothal was announced in February of 1569. 
Anna married Philip by proxy in May of 1570 and travelled from Austria to Spain. On her route to Spain, Elizabeth I of England sent her admirals to ensure her safety en route to Spain. Anna arrived in Spain on October 3, 1570 and was provided with a household directed by a family friend, Marguerite de Cardona. Anne's time at the Spanish court helped ease the stiff and somewhat lifeless atmosphere with her cheery and happy spirits. However, she kept herself busy with needlework most of the time. It is believed that Philip was loyal to his wife during their decade-long marriage, and as well as being his likely favourite wife out of all four of them. The two frequently kept in contact and wrote each other twice a week. Anna gave birth to five children in her lifetime, two who died in infancy, two who died in childhood, Ferdinand and in Diego, and one son who lived to adulthood, Philip. In the final few months of her life, the court was moved to Portugal, where Philip would eventually become king in September of 1580 with her now being the queen. She would return to Spain just before her death. Tragically, a flu epidemic spread through Spain, which ended up causing her to fall ill from influenza. Anna died on October 26, 1580 at age 30, less than a week shy of her 31st birthday. After four wives and his longed for heir, Philip spent the final 18 years of his life leading his country through several wars and ruling over his empire. He died on September 13, 1581, at age 71. He was succeeded by his son by his fourth wife, Philip III and II. Despite him surviving each of his wives, Philip learned that love is a powerful force in life and death. None of his wives lived long enough to see their children grow into powerful leaders, but he was able to witness it in a sight they wouldn't ever see. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and join the Discord server in the description. I hope to see you again soon.